We've got a new patent, new Apple patent. Uh, they filed a few of these, like, recently, and then some of them even older. But this one is interesting because it's a little bit different. It's a fresh one. New Apple patent points to inevitable foldable iPhone. So this whole the whole folding smartphone thing, you're well aware of it. I mean, we made so many videos here on the Galaxy Fold because it was the only one we could actually get our hands on. We never, the, the Mate X never showed up here, never came in studio. Who knows if it ever will? And so that was the only implementation that we had access to. So it became one that we reported on a lot. And of course, in those comment sections, there were people of differing opinions. Some are, uh, agreed that it was, it was futuristic. It was, it was progressive. And then other people saying, you know, that's just junk. It's garbage. It's a DOA. Some people just were not having it. They were not into the idea of folding phones or they didn't see the practical application or think that it was worth it. Well, the Galaxy Fold still isn't commercially available. For whatever reason, the fixes that were supposed to be in place uh, still haven't happened. But one of the groups that was sort of most critical of the existence of this device were Apple people. I heard from so many iPhone fans that were like, that's terrible. They're just jumping all over it. As, as you would, right? Samsung, Apple, in each other's crosshairs. But see, just because Apple hasn't made their version yet doesn't mean that they're not going to do it. And if you follow the patent filings, it seems pretty obvious that they're at least interested, whether these things come to be in real life or not, they're at least pretty interested. And they keep updating and changing these patents. And the most recent one that Will is showcasing here is a new type of folding structure, which may or may not be a, for a phone. It could also be for a tablet. It doesn't distinguish the difference here. And the reason this one is special is because it's a tri-fold style. It folds over on itself. It's a multiple-fold origami situation and this uh this they got a a different patent granted approved for a flexible battery in march 28th of course a flexible battery might be imperative for a design like this one and then the trademark office published a new patent for a magnetic latch that would keep the phone closed without any physical mechanism so these patents as you can tell they're they're piling up and this implementation that is illustrated in this patent, this multi-fold scenario, not just a singular book-style fold, is actually a bit similar, Will, to something that Xiaomi showed off in a very limited fashion. It was, I don't know who this, this is the CEO or some executive at Xiaomi, was he, they did this video, fairly basic video, only a couple of angles and you were, you were left to your own imagination to, to fill in the blanks, but he folds the thing from each side. Now, this is a bit different than what Apple showcased, but it is a dual folding type of implementation. Now, this was really early this, that this video came out, and there hasn't been a lot of follow-up since in terms of commercial availability. But they had a dual fold situation, and this one, that, that this patent filing from Apple, to, to me is kind of uh, similar, sort of similar to what Xiaomi uh, showed off, but different in the sense that it's like a wallet. The whole thing wraps around itself. So potentially when it's unfolded, it could be very large. And when it is folded with a tri-fold scenario, much like a wallet that you put in your pocket, you're getting a lot of surface area into a fairly compact package, kind of like a, like a candy bar of sorts. So it's important to note that these types of patents happen all the time. In many cases, they never turn into any physical product. It's just a company getting out ahead of the competition, trying to get their patents approved. So whether they choose to make something or not make something, it's, it's within their right to do so. And so they may just be kind of shotgun approach, just cast this out into the planet in some fashion so that they could potentially take advantage of this patent at some point. 
But that seems like a lot of work, and it also seems like the industry is just going this way. I talked about it in, in recent videos relating to folding phones, how folding phones are not just about immediate practical application. They've also just kind of become the battleground for innovation and advancement, kind of like the F1 vehicles of the smartphone race. Like, hey, who's the most technologically advanced? Who can deliver this science fiction style of technology? And then we'll just, whichever brand can do it, will benefit from the clout associated with that achievement and then sell you some other possibly more practical, probably more affordable smartphone down their roster. Just how, just like how uh, Honda races in in indie circuit with their race cars, and but they don't, they just want to sell you a Civic. You see what I mean? So that's that kind of stuff goes on. I, I like to use the car analogy because that's where it happens a lot. So we've got we've got we now adding this patent filing to the long list of potential foldable options. We now have the Mate X, which folds back on itself it, with a large form factor when folded and even bigger when not if the product comes to be. We've also got the Galaxy Fold, singular fold, screen on the outside, book style. We have the Motorola Razor, which we talked about, which folds lengthwise into a clamshell, like a typical flip phone, like the original Razor, inspired, and then leads to this very landscape, almost panoramic view when unfolded. And now we have this patent filing. We have the origami trifold wallet style folding phone, which what's interesting here is this would be an iPhone. All the others, of course, Android devices, this would be an iPhone. Now, my uh, my take on it, if Apple's going to do it, it's got to be polished. You know what I mean? They're, I, I, just, I just don't see them releasing a product like the Galaxy Fold that's that experimental. I feel like if Apple's going to do it, man, they're going to really need to know they're much more careful these days like it's you look at the products they're putting out they're very iterative holding on to designs a little bit longer uh certain things like air power never coming to fruition as we've as we've documented so that could be an embarrassment right as it has kind of been for samsung like samsung sure ain't happy about what happened with the galaxy fold as much as i praised it for being something so different from what i've been looking at it can't be a win for Samsung. I mean, they got the word out there that they're capable to a certain extent. But then they got the equal, the equivalent, if not more amount of backlash for the faulty devices and so forth. And they still haven't rectified it. So complicated situation. But I don't think Apple can just sit by and wait for someone to figure it out. They at least have to get the ball rolling. And this particular patent is indicative of that ball rolling. Interestingly enough, though, they're going with this strange wallet design, which uh, I don't know. I mean, we would have to obviously wait and see it in a in a physical package. But who's going to who's going to nail this one? Who's going to deliver? Because, see, the problem with folding it too many times is that the primary screen is harder to get to. Now there's a two stage situation to get to the full scale screen. You're unfolding two flaps like the Xiaomi device. And what I found happening with the Galaxy Fold is I always just went, when I was using it, I had my SIM card in it, I always just went back to the full screen. I, I almost never used the external smaller display, which is why I didn't know necessarily if I was going to gravitate towards the Mate X implementation. Because that one, the external display, is kind of big enough already, and it's like, are you going to be compelled to unfold it? How frequently? And so forth. So lots of different options here. If I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out on a limb though, because it's what I like to do. This patent filing, I think it's more of a protective measure. If Apple makes a folding phone, I don't think they'll go with this implementation. That's my take on that. I think that's too, maybe that's too futuristic. I don't know what the materials in place could be to allow for this to be the case, but Apple's first crack at it, I don't think this is gonna be it. I think it'll be one of their previous patent filings, something more simple, possibly something closer to the Motorola product, something like that. We'll see. Of course, time will tell. Now, you remember, Will, in a previous episode here, we were talking about the iPod Touch. <laughs> we talked about why 
2019, the iPod Touch in 2019. It was a bit confusing for me, for you. Neither of us could come up with a good reason for why it should still exist and uh, and who it's for, who's who the customer is. Well, I found this article on Gizmodo, and they seem to have attempted to answer our question here. Patrick Howell O'Neill on Gizmodo says, who is the new iPod Touch good for? Question mark. Privacy hawks. I didn't are you a privacy hawk, Will? Is that you? No. No, I didn't think so. See, I don't actually know any privacy hawks, but I guess that's a thing. I that's guess a those, term. Maybe those people are out there. Who knows? Privacy hawks, because here's what they're saying. Gizmodo is talking about how your phone is constantly pinging cell towers. And there's, I guess, uh, I guess that's transmitting certain information about you, your location at least. They're saying that for somebody who could, who is one of these privacy hawks, or somebody who, who lives a, some kind of a secret agent lifestyle, even that could be giving away too much intel. So, their suggestion is that an iPod Touch, which is a powerful device, on you know on par with a modern smartphone, an iPhone, along with a messaging app like Signal, encrypted, private. Now you have a communication device. Without a, without a, a, any uh, cellular radios, without the ability to ping your location, all of a sudden you're on encrypted messaging apps with iOS, so presumably you could have a VPN as well. Layers to it. Maybe if you're super into privacy, super into security, you don't even want the cell radios inside. Like, I don't know who you are. Uh, one of these guys, uh, WikiLeaks, I... Eh. They'll find you. One of these uh, political uh, any any anybody working on really sensitive stuff, super sensitive guys like Kirk. Very sensitive stuff. You know they might want to be on an iPod Touch. Imagine that. Imagine he pulls out the iPod Touch. He's like, I'm a privacy hawk, and he's just uh, he's on the messaging app encrypted. And you can't call him. He's like, I'll get back to you when I can because I'm a privacy hawk. And you can obviously only get him when he's on Wi-Fi as well. But Wi-Fi is in a lot of places, obviously, also. So anyway, they're making the case. I'm not suggesting, I don't necessarily agree with them. How big can that market possibly be? I tend to, uh, I tend to think this is more a thing that parents resistant to the idea of their children having smartphones could get this device for them as a stopgap type of device, like an iPad they can put in their pocket. That's probably who Apple is actually reaching for. But uh, shout out to the privacy hawks. Sounds like a, it's like a new age sports team. <laughs> the privacy hawks. Yeah. You right. know, but they're like, a, they play, it's like a pickup game. Like they're like, a, it's like, what, it's like a softball. It's like a co-ed softball team. I mean, well, hacking for sport no that's too predictable they just need to be in your softball your co-ed softball league and they're just called the privacy hogs see that's way funnier but then they just play softball but they all carry ipod touches mm. you see what i mean and they only communicate through signal imagine you play that team you're like geez what do they got on us i don't know can't hack them can't crack them they're the privacy hogs you see what that is you see that's intimidating will yeah it is. Uh, you don't Very want much. to play that team. Uh, look, guys, we don't... Guys, I can't sell you an iPod Touch. I can't make the case strong enough. But anyway, if you're out there, good luck to you. Uh, Bose has unveiled new noise-canceling headphones to replace the like most classic, most ubiquitous QuietComfort 35 model that has been like the standard noise canceling headphone. You see it on every airplane. You see it in every Starbucks. You see it eh, on every bus. Somebody's got one. I'm talking about the Quiet Comfort 35 and the various versions of it. They're changing it up. Like not just coming out with a refresh like they typically would, but instead a whole new design, a different look, a modern take. This could be hit, this could be miss. I'll tell you why. When you've got something that's working so well and you're moving volume like that and people are satisfied with your product and they, they've, 
They're constantly upgrading to the latest version. They're hanging on to them. When you go and make a change to the headband like this, some people might not like it as much. I hope it's light because the attributes of the ultimate kind of travel headphone for the majority of people, surprisingly, what matters to them, it's a long list. I mean, noise canceling is on there. Sound quality is on there. But comfort, weight, size when packed up, all these things matter. So it's a risky move. It's a tough move. It looks cool. It definitely looks better. I will give them that. The design looks really cool. There's like the headband goes into this chamber on the side of each ear cup and slides through it for adjustment. It's a very unusual look to it that you, you're not going to see on other headphones. So I commend them for putting together a package that looks modern it looks like a futuristic version of what they've been doing uh but like i said if the comfort's not there if it's not delivering noise canceling on the same level as the previous version you're going to have people that are upset it's a tough product to update people just really underestimate how many of them are out there and how many satisfied customers exist so they're calling it the 700 noise canceling headphones 700 kind of a weird name as well i guess they're getting rid of quiet comfort getting rid of 35 uh they're going to be 400 bucks and there's also two new sets of totally wireless earphones. So uh, I guess they got the in-ear style. They're doing a new version of that. That looks a lot like what they currently offer. So I don't know how different that's going to be. Uh, so 400 bucks is not cheap either. It puts it squarely in the territory up against some of the Sony stuff that we talked about on the channel. The, the, the latest Sony ones with the crazy product name, what was it? X w WH-1000 XM3. Wow. How about that, Will? You, you didn't it. expect me to come with the heat, with the hot fire, as the youngsters say. You don't know what the youngsters say, Will. You're, you're, you're living a life, the life of a man. No, I'm old. You're living the life of a man in the world. And that's what people love about you. Mm. So, but anyway, these headphones, these new Sonys, WH-1000 XM3, got so much love, not just from me in my video when I put them up against the QC35 II, but they got, it got so much love from the whole tech community, in fact. And they're frequently discounted on Amazon. They're available in a couple different colors. They have the built-in voice assistant. They charge over USB Type-C. They have touch controls. And, I mean, they just people love them. And people said, myself included, that the noise canceling was also a level above the Bose product. Or at least comparable. So Bose had to do something. The pressure was on. Sony was catching up, I guess. So this new model is gonna have USB-C charging, which I think is a must, in 2019. And believe it or not, their most recent version of the QC product didn't have that, it's still micro USB. Anything with micro USB in 2019 feels like a museum item. It's crazy how that happens. Like you see the micro USB, and it wasn't that long ago that it was the standard, but you just feel like it's a subpar quality product. Not to mention the fact that inserting it, bit of a nightmare. You gotta flip it around, Will. You don't want to flip it around. Guy like you? No. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So the weight, 254 grams. Maybe, Will, you can look up for me the weight of the previous version, QC35-2, the weight of it. Let's see if this is heavier or lighter. Over-ear design, new acoustic and electronics package with new digital signal processing. So they say the, the noise canceling is even better. We have a weight here, 0.52 pounds uh, could we get that in grams i have this number in grams it'd be a better comparison uh, new eight microphone system for phone calls that's uh what is it i think it was it's so it's half a pound in grams 235 grams so they are heavier that's what i was worried about so the new version is ever so slightly about 20 grams heavier this seems to be the thing that happens with these, these modern headphones they want to make them look really good but unfortunately there's a consequence in the weight department often, and then you have to wonder about comfort when you're carrying more weight. I know I'm being nitpicky, but like I look at this stuff for a living, so it's hard not to be. So active EQ sound management, built-in Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. They say uh, it's got quick charge now. That's a must as well. And that's gonna happen over type C. So 15 minutes for 3.5 hours of playtime. That's pretty sweet on a new version and 20 hours total. So shipping June 30th. You know I'm going to check them out, uh, but I think they're good looking to start. That's a start. That's all we got right now. And I think they're good looking 
And it's been a long time coming because they kept that something resembling that previous version for so long. Uh, did you know, Will? You probably didn't. You didn't know this. Maybe you did. Satellite-based internet possible by the end of the year, says SpaceX. Internet in space beaming down to cover the entire globe. That's exciting, right? Amazon, Tesla, Associated, SpaceX, and OneWeb are emerging as just some of the potential suppliers of a new kind of data-friendly satellite internet service that could bring broadband IoT connectivity to most places on Earth. Talk about, uh, I mean, you just Impressive. jump right over all laying all the wires and wow. And then all the remote places. Yeah, just launch it up into the sky and there you go. down. Put it up in space. Now, interestingly enough, it's like SpaceX with, with all this exploration, they're trying to figure out what to do as a private company. You know, they're, they're, they're obviously Elon has this obsession with space, which is cool and all, but you got to do something once you're up there. So you got to put, you got to put a payload on these rockets. So it turns out one of the things you can do is you can send up some next generation space internet to beam back down. Apparently Amazon's trying to do the same thing. Bezos, also a bit of a space nut. And uh, this new batch of satellite driven internet systems, if they work, and are eventually switched on, could provide broadband to most places, including previously internet-barren locations such as rural areas. This would be good for high-bandwidth, low-latency, remote internet of things, and increasingly important edge server connections for verticals like oil and gas. So, again, we talked recently about rural connectivity. Well, we're talking about the whole Huawei ban and all that stuff. It's like, this is a big issue. How do you cost effectively deliver connections to these edge cases, to these remote places? Uh, as of right now, it appears SpaceX has gotten the farthest along because it's a commercial enterprise. As I mentioned, they've launched, they're on the cusp, and apparently there's some advantages to uh, moving the internet into space. This article says bits travel faster in free space even than in a, a glass fiber cable which up until this point, that's pretty much the fastest connection that people are using. So interesting stuff. This is the type of futuristic thing that really feels sci-fi. This is the thing that really, it makes you feel like progress is taking place in, in the kind of sci-fi fashion that you had predicted. Internet in space, less wires, just beaming down globally. Kind of cool. Don't you agree, Will? I agree. Anything to do with space. I agree. All space, all the time. Yeah. Uh, except for the movie Gravity. Remember, we covered that yesterday. Yeah. Don't don't be swimming laps in outer space. No. I'm not down no. with that. That's I don't. It's too hard for me. I just can't get into it. So, you have any stories for us today, or just some questions, Will? Um, one story here. Okay. Did you hear about um, China? They made a an event with 500 drones and they're performing like a light show i did not see this a total of 526 drones perform a light show in the sky during the china international big data industry expo all right we got a video clip oh my goodness gracious look how creepy all those look like little little flies so they're 500 drones um they're in kind of like a grid <laughs> chill and they're go kinda, on, Will. Don't worry about these these dogs. Don't let these dogs take over the show. All right. They're so loud. No, don't let uh, them have their way. Wow, that is amazing. So they form shapes like the uh, one the globe, before that you just showed square. with the when it was like a human body, uh, like three D. That's crazy. That's really cool. So they're of course all synced up to one another, working in tandem. It looks like a more sophisticated flock of birds we were talking about this earlier today how nature creates these weird the the birds just know where to go and what to do right in nature this is obviously i mean the reason these drones know what to do is through programming and engineering yep and they're done at it's done at night um they have leds attached which um creates different colors that's super cool i definitely recommend checking out that clip right there uh it goes to show you what's possible Drones working in tandem, drones delivering packages, uh, uh, drones 
lifting you up and taking you to another like, drone taxis. Transportation. Uh, it, it's it's also it's amazing how when whenever you see these kinds of I mean it's not would it be considered AI I guess to a certain extent maybe like a limited yeah, fashion. Yeah, they said that it's only in on one computer. All these one computer's are running all one. this. Yeah. I suppose when when you see this manifested in a physical form, like of course on a computer you could do uh, a CG generated version of this, but when you see it happening in the physical world, with you know these uh, sh uh, mini little motorized vehicles, you get a sense for it's it just has a more tangible effect. When I see this, I think about like the highway system, for example. I think about gridlock, traffic, and like, man, if all these cars could just talk to each other, what are we doing here? We could all travel at the same speed, like a train. Like, look at these. Look at how elegant they are. They know where to go. They're not yeah. crashing into each other. Now, I understand. Black Mirror, everybody's afraid, all right? You don't want... Uh, getting hijacked. They're, they're, they're sending you into a telephone pole when you become inconvenient, Will. No, you're happy to hold the steering wheel yourself. At least you know you're in control. So there's, of course, a billion philosophical questions that come along with that, but it looks so elegant when it works properly, far more elegant than uh, the alternative, the gridlock alternative. Yep. Very cool. All right, you have some questions as well? I do. Okay. Hey, guys, I consider Lou a very intelligent person. What a gr Will, what are you trying to do here? Just a setup? The next, it's like you read that line, then and the next line is... Down. Yeah. So, so I can, so therefore I can put up with the fact that he's terribly ugly. Like that's the next, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's, I'm, he's a very it's intelligent a person and therefore yeah. I can listen to him even though he's annoying and ugly and he smells bad. You see, you can add all that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. It's going to probably say that next. No, it doesn't. I want to ask him if he ever did an IQ test and if he did, what is his IQ? I did. I don't think so. Maybe I did one of those like online ones at one time. Yeah. But are those even legit equivalent? No, not really, right? I did not do an official IQ test of any kind. Maybe it's a whole new stream of content for us. We can do an IQ challenge, everyone in the studio. Yeah. No, I don't think. Are you signing up for that, Will? I think we all should. Wow. that's Even Otis. Sounds like a serious challenge. Uh, no, I don't think I've ever done it, but I appreciate the compliments. What can I really say? Uh, happy to have you on board here. Sandu, it's a, it's a, uh, I feel, uh, what, what do I feel? What do I feel right now? I feel complimented. That's there about it. But I got to play it. I got to play it like Kawhi Leonard. It's yes. about the team. Definitely. You know what I mean? It's not about me. You play to win. It's not about me. I'm not, you know, it's about the package deal. Yeah. It's about, they asked him, they're like, um, they were like, aren't you bothered by the fact that you're not the most famous player, even though you might be the best? And he's like, no, not at all. It's not why I do this. Like, I'm not doing this for that. He plays the game to be out there. And uh, he plays the game to, to, to do his best, to play it right. I feel like uh, that's, uh, you can draw some inspiration from that. Especially considering there's no shortage of individuals who encompass the alternative viewpoint, which is that they're the sole focus and then th that they're the reason mm -hmm. for all good things happening. So it's a bit refreshing. He's a different dude. Yeah. Super humble. So I'm, Shout I'm, out. I'm going to take the same thing on that. I only appear like I have, like I'm intelligent because of the team. Cause Willie do making me look fancy over there. Yeah. And, uh, Kirk flicking the switches over there. See, this is, trust me, this is not natural. If you had to see what I actually look like right now, Right when God. you walk in, oh. God. God. you'd be out of here, you know? What do you got next, Will? I'm a big fan from the UK. What do you think of us? Oh, we're doing we're doing the we're doing the UK. We're not all tea and poshness. Uh this is from George Thompson in the UK. So this is a this has been happening now. It's a thing. Because I did, I said what I thought about, how did India, it all start? Australia. Philippines, Australia. Australia happened, then India, then the Philippines, and now it's a common thing. People are asking what I think about their place. The UK, I've been to a few times, many times, I guess. So 
I have a little bit more uh, experience in this department. What's that bar that you went to? I went that to a really, crazy uh, bar in the the hotel is called the Savoy, and it's one of the oldest cocktail bars. But I don't remember the name. It's uh, the Savoy. You'll probably have to put the Savoy London. It's a really old hotel that I stayed in, and the bar, one of the first cocktail bars, American bar. There it is, right there. Four point seven rating. Very uh, kind of expensive co cocktails, <laughs> but. A really cool atmosphere and uh, experimental uh, types of cocktails. Cool place. Anyway, yeah, so I've been to the UK. What can I say? It's um, being a Canadian, there's kind of a connection there to a degree. The queen is on the money over here, you know. So she, we were part, Canada was part of the British Commonwealth for a long time. Still is? I don't know. Was, I mean, to a lesser degree now, whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. Is the queen still on the money or did she leave the money? She's still on the money. The queen is still on the money. Yeah. So how about that? Uh, people in the UK, they don't want me to talk about the poshness thing. But there is obviously that that's a thing. Um, it's uh, it's not, not all that different, to be honest, beyond the... Beyond the accent and the tea, as you mentioned, I had good food while I was there, I will say. Ate in some nice restaurants, so that stereotype of like, there's a stereotype that you're not going to get good food, which is stupid. I ate at some really nice restaurants. Of course, any big city, metropolitan, cool city like that, you're going to... A lot of history. Love the history, obviously. Man, walking around London, that's just something that, that you you don't really appreciate as much here. You can, there are historical sites in Toronto, but I mean, historical here is like a hundred years old. Historical in London is like a thousand years old or like 500 years old or something like Colonial that. Colonial times. It's, I mean, it's just, it's just, it just goes back. Mm -hmm. Things go back. And so that's always a cool experience whenever visiting a place like that. I have friends uh, I find I find people in the UK to be relatively friendly. I know there's another stereotype that like the commuters, the tube, that people like aren't paying attention to each other or or nice. You know what I mean? They don't like no notice each other that they exist. Things like this. But I guess I think as well that that's another any big city type of phenomenon as well. So I don't I don't think that's exclusive to London. But yeah, I got no problems. I'm happy. I, I I can deal with it. And oh, I should mention uh, 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 British chocolate. I love British chocolate. Whenever I travel, I come back. I have the uh, I have the Galaxy. Okay, I have the Galaxy. I bring it back, and uh, I bring back the Boost bar. Oh yeah, Boost is great. I bring back the Boost. So flake. I mean, the British got the chocolate thing figured out. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful situation. So now I, I can I order it online sometimes, or there's a candy shop at the mall oh, which yeah. carries a lot of it. So I'll pick some up there. So the candy game, unbelievable. And uh, so overall, great. It's a great package deal. Uh, I love the UK. Let's go. There it is. I did have an interesting conversation though. I should just say with a cab driver in the UK who's trying to explain soccer to me. Football, Will. Let's get it straight. Football. Because they have the Champions League and they have the, the League League and it's like, when is the playoffs? And he's like, well, no, the main thing that matters, there is no playoff. It's just who gets the highest points. I was a bit upset about that. I know they still have playoffs and I understand it's all going on right now. So I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I'm just, that was a bit foreign for me. So let me just throw that out there. All right. Uh, next question. I am a fan of both Unbox Therapy and Lou Later, and I have been watching the Huawei news as it unfolds. I just wanted to ask both of you what your favorite food is. <laughs> that was, you see that? The pivot? He got us. Yeah. Uh, thank you for watching, first of all. The news is crazy. It's going to keep happening. We'll still be here. Favorite food is a hard one to answer. Very hard. Because there's a lot of ways you can read that question. You know, it's like 
there's a lot that goes into that because food is more than flavor. Well, yeah. food is socializing. Food is family. Food is memories. Food is love. Well, so it's a tough one to answer. But what I'm going to have to do here. Oh, boy. Well, come on, man. Wait, maybe, do you want to answer first? You answer first. You're on okay. the question as okay. well. Um, I, I got to say Jamaican patties are like, I can have it any day of the week at any time. You got, Vin's, you got Vin's reaction over there. He Aren't doesn't believe you. He That's doesn't great. believe you right now. They're amazing. No, I like Jamaican patties. I mean, yeah. uh, how spicy? Uh, pretty spicy. Yeah, I'm, pretty I, spicy. I'm down with spicy. Yeah. I mean, I'll eat. I'll, I grew up eating those. Those are, but most people aren't going to say it's their favorite food, Will. I don't know, man. I, I guess like longevity, I, I can eat you keep it going back. literally any day. Wow. Anytime. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. I mean, hey, man, I'm not going to dispute it. Yeah. You know, on a previous episode, we got a question specific about pizza. Okay. Yep. Now, I know it's a cop out to say pizza, but just hear me out, please. Please hear me out. I spoke in that episode. Well, first of all, we had a pizza history lesson. I mean, because <laughs> of course we did. But I spoke about how what I like about pizza is the way that it's consumed, that it's a social food, what it represents. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can share it. That it's moment of like the sporting event is on, or you're playing some video games, or you're hanging out with friends. And it's like, you know what? We should order a pizza. That moment right there of like, ah, we're hanging out for a bit because a pizza's coming. There's some magic there that doesn't exist with other foods. Other foods, you know what's happened recently is uh, skip the dishes, Uber Eats. Can we? Ah! I'm, I'll be having, can I see the menu, please? I'll be having... Uh, can you make sure to hold the onions on my particular dish? And then it gets there and everything is scrambled eggs. Every single dish. Vin, don't look at me. You know it's true. It's a, I hate that that... Ru they, it's ruining pizza. In fact, it's ruining it. Because now people, generations of people aren't going to know what it's like to compromise, Will. To say, you know what? Yeah, I get those toppings. I'll have a slice. To actually physically share a pie. Like, mathematically. To slice it into pieces and, and share. And to break bread together, Will. Literal bread, tomato, cheese. Mm. You see what I'm doing here? You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this? So your favorite pizza is the Neapolitan? Yeah, I, I like the okay. classic pizza. I will say, I kind of hate the fact that a pizza like this, like the one you're showing off, like a classic, like the original wood-burning pizza, is actually tough to have delivered. They don't want to deliver it. So it takes back, it peels back a little bit on my analysis because you're supposed to eat that dead fresh, right. straight out the oven. So there are levels to the pizza game from sitting in the pizzeria and having that experience and paying way too much money to like, the do tracking the dominoes on the online order thing. But the thing is, I don't discriminate with pizza because of everything it represents. I mean, a, if, it, if, it's, if it's cardboard, I'm discriminating. But otherwise, I'd say my threshold, I accept many different forms of pizza into the household. But it's the whole package deal. It's what it represents. It's the social component. It's the good time. It's the sharing is a key factor as well. If you take all of those things out, I would just take a pasta with a meat sauce and the Parmesan cheese. But I mean, that's got to be done correctly. I'm not accepting just anything there. You have to have the al dente noodle. You don't overcook my noodle, okay? You got to have that. You got to have a meat sauce that's been cooking for a while. It's not going to be spaghetti. I'm probably going to take um, rigatoni. No, I'm probably going to take, uh, uh, wait, give me, let me see what a rigatoni is. Let me see what the shape of that is. 
Let me see what the shape of a rigatoni is. Yes, I'm going to take a rigatoni. Okay? That is the dish. Click on the one. Go down. Down one more. Click on that. Okay? No, 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 no. How dare you? How dare you? It's a way bigger noodle. So it's, it's by default, it's going to be Which cooked. It's it? going to hold. It's going to cook differently. A penne is a smaller noodle. You find a different consistency in the way that it cooks. It doesn't hold the sauce the same way. What happens when these are cooked, they kind of like flatten out a little bit, a rigatoni. Each bite is a bigger thing going on, holding the sauce differently. Get out of here with the penne. Penne is the most boring pasta ever. Okay. Like what type? Wait, wait, like a small, like a small shell, like a macaroni shell, a big shell. I, I it's getting too fancy for me at that point. I mean, that, that one over there, stuffed shells. I mean, I could eat that, right there. But I mean, look, everybody's gonna have their own preferences. I know I sound like I'm getting fired up. Everybody's got you got to have your preferences. In fact, we should ask you. We should throw it back on you into the comments your favorite foods from around the world because it's so much you can't even try it all. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, I know I sound passionate. I don't really, to each their own, you know. But I'm just saying, if we can do some rigatoni, let's do some rigatoni. If, we, if we, you can get me the British chocolate, let's do the British chocolate. And if we need to order a pizza because the situation calls for it, then let's order a pizza. That's it. Kirk, cut it. That's it. It's right there.